Welcome to another video. We're going to find all prime triples such that the product of those prime numbers is equal to 59 times the sum of the prime numbers. Now, testing out numbers might give you some solutions or even all the solutions. The problem is you never know when you found all the solutions if all you do is test values. So it's always better to do some algebra to set boundaries or limits, say, or restrictions, like I would call them, so that when you get to a certain point, you know, I don't need to test any other numbers. Shout out to Nate for sending in this problem. And I really like the problem. And there's a second problem in the email that I received that I'm going to also make a video on after I fully understand how to solve it. Let's get into the video. Now, the solution that I'm going to use here is exactly what Nate did in the work that he sent me because I found it very um, clean, very clean and easy to follow, as I said in my response. Um, so let's look at the problem. PQR is equal to 59 times P plus Q plus R. What makes prime number problems easier than other problems with composite numbers is that you know some divisions are impossible. For example, we can see that the right-hand side is divisible by 59. If I divide this by 59, I'm going to get P plus Q plus R. And because this is an equation, the left-hand side must be divisible by 59, right? Okay, and because these are prime numbers, they don't have common factors, they're not composite, so you cannot rearrange any factors to get another number, so one of these must be 59. Since you can divide this by 59, one of these three must be 59. So, we say, since the right-hand side is divisible by 59, then the left hand side must have a factor of 59. It means either P is 59 or Q is 59 or R is 59. Now, we have to then say, let's, let's just pick one of them, okay? This is where you use the term or the expression without loss of generality because it doesn't matter which one you pick as 59. You see, you could, any of these could be 59, the value would not change. Any of these could be 59, the value will not change because of the commutative nature of addition and multiplication, okay? So we can say, let... Uh, you pick the letter you don't want to keep writing. So which one is the least attractive? I'm going to pick Q. Let Q be. Let Q be equal to 59. Okay? Without loss of generality. So it doesn't have to be Q in particular, but it doesn't matter which one you pick. Okay? So if Q is 59... It means what we have on this side is 59PR equals 59P plus Q plus R, which means we can divide both sides by 59, and we can say, therefore, what is left, because if this is 59, we can divide both sides by 59, or let's just write it, 59PR equals 59, 59, and this is R. So if we divide both sides by 59, we end up with PR equals, this 59 is gone, we have P plus 59 plus R. Remember, everything we're dealing with is prime. So, what can we do here? So, what we could do is write one in terms of the other and then test possible values that will make one of them prime. Remember, it has to be prime. So, let's say we're trying to find, um, we have PR. So, let's write this as 59 plus R. Let's move P over here. So we have PR, hey, small P, come on. PR minus P 
is equal to 59 plus r. If we factor out p, we're going to get p into r minus 1 equals 59 plus r, so that p equals 59 plus r over r minus 1. Okay, now this is essential. See, you will wonder, why did they choose the number 59? Could we have picked the number 10? Could we have picked the number 21? Why is it 59 in particular? Well, 59 had to be firstly a prime number. So that's why we were able to say Q is 59 because 59 is prime. Okay, now for this second one, we want to see what possible values of r we will be using so that when we get p, p is going to be a prime number. Remember, it has to be a prime number. So, and r also is a prime number. So let's start from the smallest possible prime number, and then we're going to try, we keep trying them until we go, okay, we can't keep trying numbers because we're just going to be repeating the same thing. Or, let's see. Let's try the first prime. So, testing. Prime numbers, prime values for R, okay? So we're going to say P, let's say R equals 2. Remember, R is a, 2 is a prime number, okay? So if R equals 2, we're going to say implies P equals 59 plus 2 over 2 minus 1. That's going to give us 61. That works. So when r equals 2, p is 61, both of them are prime numbers, and 59 is a prime number. So we go to the next prime number and see if it makes sense. Now, any prime number that does not make sense, we're not going to use, okay? So if we continue, let's do it here. For r equals, the next prime number is 3. So we're going to say, P equals 59 plus 3 over 3 minus 1, which implies that P equals, what would P be? 59 plus 3 is going to be 62. 62 over 2 is um, 31. Oh, that's another prime number. 31 is a prime number. So we've got another solution, which is, so this is pretty easy because you're looking for prime numbers. That's another solution. So we're going to do another one um, for r equals, the next prime number is 5. Now, if we plug in 5, we're going to have, let's do it mentally first. 59 plus 5 is going to give us 64. 64 divided by 4 is 16. 16 is not a prime number. Okay, for r equals 5, p equals 16. Not valid. So we're not going to do that. Notice something about the values you're getting for p. p is getting smaller. We started with p being 61, and then p suddenly became 31. The next calculation we just did, P has become 16. So you notice that the values of P will be dropping as long as we keep this to be constant as 59. So it's gonna, it's gonna get smaller. So eventually you're gonna end up with ending your whole test because there's nothing else that's gonna come out of it. So for R equals, what's the next prime number? We got seven. It's gonna be P, um, P equals 59 plus 7 over 7 minus 1. What would that be? 66 over 6. That's 11. That's a prime number. So we also have another solution. P, Q, R, small p, equals, what's that? It's going to be, P is 11, 59, and R equals 7. Okay. So, let's try another number. The next prime number after 7 is 11. <sighs> but that's already 11. Remember, we said it doesn't matter which one is which. So, if as long as you have 59, and you now pick your R to be 11, it means your P is going to be 7, which means you're just repeating the process. Any other prime number after... You know what? Let's just try a random prime number that is beyond 11. Let's do... 
um, 13. What if we try 13? Okay, let's see. So if we try 13, 59 plus 13 is going to be 72. 72 divided by 12 is 6. 6 is not a prime number. So it appears that if you keep going beyond that, you're going to get numbers that are not prime or numbers that are not prime. <laughs> Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.